Judas in my mind. Um, okay, I still can't sing. Welcome to the Wrestling Wednesday podcast here on a Friday because thank you, AWN. Uh, Friday Night Smackdown. <laughs> um, yeah, I still can't. Th I still can sing, obviously, but I can enjoy wrestling because this week. Smackdown and AW delivered big time, in my opinion, in my humble opinion. And I almost said the F word in a positive way. Seeing Chris Jericho coming out to an audience, the audience singing along with his theme, Judas in my mind, goosebumps. I'm not even kidding. I saw it on Instagram first, on the AW Instagram. Literally goosebumps that's why we're wrestling fans right this is and you saw chris jericho in the ring the rest of the inner circle too s smiling just enjoying it people having fun living like i don't know not their best life but just living in the moment having fun watching what they love and just being there it was amazing like when the crowd goes judas in my mind it's unbelievable like fantastic i cannot wait Oh, there's a stadium stampede, so maybe there are no fans for this event, for the Jericho match. Huh. But I can't wait, can't wait to see this like in a big arena, in a pay-per-view again. Would, oh, yes! Wrestling with fans. This is awesome. <laughs> but before we go there, let's just break it down again. What happened at AW Dynamite and WWE SmackDown? Raw still banished. So... In the beginning of AW Dynamite, um, Darby Allen and Sting came out, and uh, Darby Allen was facing off with Cesar, Cesar, Cesar Bononi, uh, Cesar Bononi, Brazil, right? Um, he came with the wingman Ryan Nemeth, JD Drake, Peter Avalon. Um, I mean, Bononi doubled the size of Darby Allen, so he threw him around quite quite a lot, which was which was. Um, Cool to see because, I mean, that just made sense. And he also went for the rips that Darby Allen had taped um, to quote Jim Ross. Darby is getting ragdolled here. <laughs> yes, that is very true. Um, in the end, of course, uh, Darby Allen fought back, was like resilient, hit, had hit uh, uh, a double-footed, what they call it? When I'm recording, I never, I always forget those terms that I could just throw out when, if I would only be on Twitter typing like a keyboard warrior. Those, the, the, the Finn Balor dropkick basically hit him in the corner, then a coffin drop, this term I remember, and then he picks up the victory. Of course, then um, afterwards, <clears throat> what should happen? Of course, uh, Scorpio Sky, Ethan Page come out, beating them down, but then saved by the Dark Order. Yay. All right. Um, oh, oh, I forgot. Of course, they tried to pilmanize um, Sting's angle because that's a thing that you do these days, right? Pilmanize stuff. Um, but that's then when the Dark Order came out to um, to help. And I'm hesitating because I, I looked at my notes and I saw what's next. And this next program was just the worst again. I hate it with all my heart. Cody Rhodes, I love you for starting AW with the Bucks and all of them. But for f fuck's sake, and I said it, can this segment is so bad. America versus United Kingdom. I almost <coughs> died here. America. Well, <coughs> different voice. <coughs> America. No, different. America versus the United Kingdom. Two worlds, two fighters fighting for the greater good. It's so much bullshit. It's ridiculous. I hate it. 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 They had weigh-ins like it was a boxing, like an actual boxing or an MMA match with, with Paul Wright. The Paul Wright um, officiating the weigh-in, which was awkward because then Cody Rhodes steps on the scale and Paul Wright is like, I don't know how to do the scale thingy and it takes forever until he reads like 218 pounds and then Anthony Ogogo steps on the scale same thing again I don't know how to do this 219 pounds so now we have one pound difference who cares wrestling is not about weight class it's not, there's no weight class what in the f I hate that's a WWE segment storyline whatever it's the worst it's so annoying 
Cody Rhodes, let it go. No one wants to see this. I hate it. Oh, it's a, it's a Vince McMahon segment. Why would you do that? Oh, no. Annoying. Annoying, annoying, annoying. Annoying. Ooh. Okay. I need <laughs> cut, move on. That was really annoying. So then backstage we saw uh, Hobbs attacking Christian Cage. Um, and then Christian actually speared Hobbs eventually. Um, so then, and both of them will be in the Casino Battle Royal that of course Christian Cage is going to win. Um, I wrote down who's in the Battle Royal. We have um, Hobbs, Jungle Boy, uh, Matt Hardy, Judy Marshall, Pendel Cero Miedo, Christian Cage, Griff Garrison, Brian Pillman Jr., Stu Grayson, Nick Comoroto, Lee Johnson, Dustin Rhodes, Anthony Bones, Max Caster, I hope he's going to rap, uh, Isaiah Cassidy, Mark Quinn, Matt Seidel, Evil Uno, Colt Cabana, and a mystery entrant. Okay, so that sounds fun. I mean, battle royals, either fun or terribly boring. So far, AW always had like decent battle royals, so I'm looking forward to this one. Okay, the next was uh, the bad boy, Joe Janela, long time no see, um, with, versus Hangman Adam Page. Um, this was kind of fun, lots of back and forth, of course, like they showcase both of them eventually. Adam Page uh, wins with his buckshot lariat, of course, um, and then Taz is in commentary, and then of course scouting Adam Page, and then all of a sudden, of course, um, Brian Cage is there um, after the match uh, and what is about to... Um, Beat down. Oh, by the way, before I go there, um, Adam Page was bleeding in his head, and then like, all his hair was red from blood. So every show on AW show now needs some blading, some bleed there. Not complaining, just saying it's a recurring to uh, theme right now. Um, so then we had the face up between Page and Cage, and Page grabs Mike like, "Hey man, do you really need those other goons? Like, don't you have the balls? Can't you?" Like, kick my ass all by yourself. And then Cage like, yeah, I don't need them. If you want the machine by yourself, you get the machine by yourself. And so um, we will have um, Brian Cage versus Hangman Adam Page all by himself. Okay. Then we get a promo from the promo maestros, Eddie Kingston and John Moxley. It's awesome. <laughs> Second best promo segment uh, in the show. Pure promo, the best, but I still like the singing of the theme song of Chris Jericho better. But um, pure promo, it was the best. Like, they're just awesome. And then, I mean, I can't even repeat everything, but at first, like, it's Moxley all intense and stuff. And then Kingston, like, all intense. And he's like, hey, we're going to we're gonna take the young bucks out. And maybe, maybe we become, we're going to be vice president. Maybe I'm going to be vice president. Maybe Mox is going to be vice president. And John Moxley from the back. Uh, I don't want to. I don't. I don't want it. And Eddie King's like, you don't want it. No, I don't. I don't want it. Okay, but we're gonna win. <laughs> they are awesome. The promos fantastic. Awesome. Yes. Love it. Can't wait. This should be a fun match between like Super Kick Party. Um, yeah. Here, what's a Flip Monkeys? What was it? Spot Monkeys. Uh, and then the Brawlers. This should be fun. Uh, should be fun. All right. Then in the ring we have. Tony Schiavone and he introduces, uh, is about to introduce freshly squeezed. But um, Pac comes in uh, and it's like, microphone, I tell you, I'm going to win, blah, 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 blah. Then we have Don Callis on the, on, on the Tron distracting uh, Pac. Uh, Kenny tries to uh, approach from the back and tries to attack him, but Pac sees it, lays down Ken Kenny. Then the good brothers are coming in. Uh, then the Death Triangle, um, Penta and Ray Phoenix are coming in to help. So they are sending the Good Brothers away. Uh, so then it's Kenny setting up the one winged angel on pack. But then Orange Cassidy's music hits. Cassidy comes out with the best friends, of course. Uh, and then he hands Kenny something. It looks like the contract they gave him last week to say no thank you to, to the triple threat. Kenny opens it and then it's like, the crumpled contract, like torn into pieces and the pieces just come out and fly away. And then Orange Cassidy already took out his uh, off his, his, his jacket and attacks Kenny Omega with the orange punch. Then Pac tries to take out Orange Cassidy. Cassidy um, 
moves out of the way also orange punch to pack cassidy standing tall in the end which tells us he's not gonna win on sunday but still a nice visual and he has his hands on a championship which hopefully means that maybe down the road he will get a fair shot eventually this sunday kenny omega is gonna retain all right and that was fun though that was like, a nice setup um so that was cool then we had um, Tate Cargill having like an open challenge because that's a thing in wrestling now. And Kylan King accepted. Um, that was actually a fun matchup. In the end, of course, Tate Cargill um, has to take it because they're still building her up and so on with her devastating buster face splash, whatever you call it. But the match was kind of fun to watch. Um, Kylan King put in some nice offense that was cool some show of strength as well um liked it it was nice uh it didn't, wasn't great but for the, what it was it was nice um yeah so then we had um oh yeah of course the tnt championship miro versus dante martin of top flight um and <laughs> Tim Ross, I wrote it down again. Tim Ross was like, I think Miro agreed to this match to piss off the murder hog monster, Lance Archer. No way, Tim Ross. No way. Really? <laughs> Tim Ross still with some of those WWE things here. Um, of course, Miro was dominating, but he was somehow Dante Martin, I know, Weasel is not Weasel, but like was hanging in there and then had a chance to show some offense by himself, like some high-flying stuff, really cool, really acrobatic. That's why what we know, Top Flight 4 was really cool. But in the end, of course, Miro just decimated him. And then in the end, of course, the... How do I, how does it call it? No. No, uh, no. The game over submission. I was like, huh, it's not the, it's not the one that we have to use it. It's not Miro Crush anymore. Uh, Rusev Crush. It's Miro game over so the game over submission um and so dante martin had to tap out then of course check the snake comes out with with lance archer and i love check the snake for what he did back then but man he's not that good at promos anymore seriously and uh, then lance lance ran into uh, the ring attacked miro and actually stood tall let's see how this goes tim ross said it's gonna be a slobber knocker i hate the word slobber knocker um then we had Hikaru Shido being honored and getting the new AW title, which was nice. Um, then, of course, Britt Baker came out and said she's not going to be just the face of the women's division. She's going to be the face of a whole new era. Um, That's going to be a fun match. I can't wait for this. This is awesome. Um, so, Dr. Britt Baker, love you. <laughs> It's gonna be nice. And the pros are just awesome. Um, I'm I'm looking. The matches too, of course. I, the match is gonna be amazing. I can't wait for this one. Um, what else do we have? We had uh, Evil Uno and Stu Grayson versus Scorpio Sky and all Ego Ethan Page. And we all know how this had to end, of course, with um, Ethan Page and Scorpio Sky winning. But uh, Evil Uno and Stu Grayson were showing a good fight. There it was actually kind of nice. Um, like, they also had a chance to, to bring some offense in, but of course, in the end, Scorpio Sky, um, Ethan Page had to win. Um, they did show their, what's it called? I wrote it down. Let me check my notes again. They had uh, Cannibal 450, but Page was kicking, or kicked out of this, and, and then in the end, of course, they, they pulled it off. But after the, the fight, or after the match, then um, Darby Allen came out with like an army of guys dressed like Sting. <laughs> it was kind of kind of cool. Um, Scorpio Sky was dispatching them basically um, until he met the real sting. <laughs> it was kind of fun though. Um, and so then Scorpio Sky and Ethan Page retreated, uh, Sting and Darby Allen standing tall. So that's going to be fun. Okay, and then the last thing that happened was the celebration of the Inner Circle with um, Eric Bishop being out there and then just introduced the inner circle and then like this Judas in my mind concert started which was amazing um and well they had a quick recap of how the inner circle came came about and so on uh everyone was like yeah inner circle who and they they posed with like the middle finger up at the end and then mgf was on the tron like yeah here yeah, cool cool but uh, look what i have here and he was in the stadium and he showed dean malenko being basically tied to like a Post. It's like, you better come down here or we're going to do worse to, to your pal Dean Malenko. Jericho and Malenko being close friends and Jericho ran down. Everyone was running towards the stadium. Uh, and of course, it was a setup and they got attacked from behind from the pinnacle and they got taken out. And of course, the pinnacle was standing tall, which means the inner circle going to win on Sunday and I can't wait for this. So 
this was a fantastic, not a fantastic, this was a, yeah, close to, it was a great AW, it was lots of fun, time passed by very quickly watching it, the only thing I really hated was the Cody Rhodes, uh, Anthony Gogo thing, but I've been hating on this for the past few weeks, it's just annoying, I'm glad when it's over, F this whole thing, the rest was cool, I can't wait for Double or Nothing on Sunday, yes, it's gonna be awesome. Also, awesome Mish was SmackDown, awesome Mish, so the main story, of course, Usos, Roman Reigns, um, tag team, yes, no, uh, let's see, and of course, as soon as SmackDown was uh, on the air, right, you you knew, like, it's all about the story between, um, between, like, the Usos, and then uh, can they go for the tag team titles in, in the end, of course. And eventually we had the match between the Usos and the Street Profits, and Montez Ford is just awesome. <laughs> I just like what, I like his ability to like pull off great moves, like impressive moves, but also like his facial expressions and everything. He's just really good at all those things, so I, I, I love that. Um, and it's also nice that the story shows how Roman Reigns tries to manipulate Jay into doubting himself and so on. And Jimmy is still like, behaves a little bit naive, like the way that Jay behaved before Roman showed him who's the boss, right? It's like, no, we can do it, we can do it, we, can, we, we are awesome, and so on. Um, and they won this time around, which just has you to know that A, after they won... Uh, Jay didn't seem overly happy, like, okay, man, now we have to go for the tag titles. But you know something's going to happen, right? You know, you know they're not going to get it. You know something's going to happen, probably Roman Reigns interfering or whatever. So, um, but the whole story is very intriguing. I like it. Um, that's all well set up. Uh, uh, that's cool. Then um, we have Seth Rollins. Rollins coming out, like, mocking Cesaro, why Cesaro can't be here today, of course. So that was a thing that happened during SmackDown. And he blames the fans for brainwashing Cesaro into believing that Cesaro could actually win, which is also nice. Um, I like it. He keeps dripping, of course. <laughs> the CrossFit Messiah, CrossFit Jesus is now the drip king or whatever you want to call him. Um, so that's actually more fun than I expected it to be. I'm not a big fan of the current Rollins character, as I mentioned several times before. But right now... It kind of works, so um, yeah, this is going to be fun when Cesaro actually gets his hands on him. On him. It should be fun. Um, what else did we have? Let me check my notes. Yeah, Shinsuke Nakamura versus Chad Gable, the two most underutilized talents, that's how you call it, right, on the roster right now. Um, yeah, of course, uh, Corbin tried to um, interfere, grab his crown, uh, crown, but of course it didn't work out. Um, in the end, it was a pretty, like, Gable started off strong with a few suplexes that looked nice, but then, of course, a quick Kinshasa, a very quick, way too soon, I believe, um, for Nakamura to pick up the victory, because Gable is just being chopped out these days. Mm, we had Dominic Mysterio versus the Dirty Dogs, because, um, of course, Rey Mysterio um, going, was going to get taken out before this match. So Dom had to go at it alone. But then, of course, Ray coming out to distract um, Dolph Ziggler. So then uh, Dominic actually could pick up the victory. I'm still not quite sure like where they're going overall with this. Because in the beginning, they, they built up Dominic really well, really strong. Then they dropped him out so many times. And now they're building him up again. It's like, huh, what did you do? We had Bianca Belair. <sighs> I don't know why. I mean, she's great in the ring, but I don't like... I'm not a big fan of her personality. Like, like just forced, like, I'm the EST. I just, I don't... I, it doesn't resonate with me. Uh, Camella? Hmm. <laughs> I'm kidding. Um, Cam yeah, decent match. Camella is still getting better in the ring, I believe. Um, remember, the, like, two years ago so when she was terrible. Um, so getting much better now, I, I think. Um, but, of course, um, the EST has to take it. Um, oh yeah, also, I mean, of course, Bailey on the commentary, and I uh, just saw it in my notes again, that uh, Michael Cole called uh, Bianca Belair Belanca, and, uh, or Belanca, I forgot, and uh, Bailey was just ripping him for it. It was awesome. So ripping on uh, Bailey on commentary with Michael Cole is really fun. Um, we then had uh, Apollo Grunai, Cheer and Nail, <laughs> defeating Kevin Owens, of course, because what else should happen? Uh, DQ then, of course, and so uh, Adam Pierce says, hey, KO, you can have the title match next week. Yay. I mean, yay, but... Uh. And uh, 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 Natalia and Tamina versus the Riot Squad. And of course, Natalia and Tamina defeated the Riot Squad. 
but uh, it was not that, that bad as bad as the previous ones but still not that engaging um i i mean the right the riot squad was so promising and now they're just racking up l's it's just it was overall it was quite good if i would grade it i'm not but if i would i would give it a b maybe and dynamite i would have given like an a minus so because of cody mm -hmm. um but yeah so two very fun shows this week i believe um i can't wait for double nothing it should be lots of fun let me know what you think about aw dynamite did you sing with um Judas in my mind do you enjoy the cody Rhodes segments with engineer gogo that uh, what do you think about smackdown what do you think is going to happen with jay and jimmy uso uh what, what's going to happen with cesaro is he going to actually win the big one for once hmm. let me know uh reach out via comments social media email funkitpod at gmail.com until then don't forget always kick out at two take care stay safe see you next time